hello it has been a really long time welcome back to my channel my name's Jordy if you don't know me and first I just want to say a big huge thank you to everyone who has been so patient and kind and uh, hasn't been mean to me for not uploading while I'm healing if you don't follow me on Instagram, you probably don't know that I broke my tailbone. My, my tailbone broke because it's deformed, because I have a connective tissue disorder. There's a lot. I'm not going to bore you with it right now, but hopefully I can find a little bit of pain relief that works so I can get back to filming and editing. Filming is okay. It's the editing that takes so long that hurts really badly. But I'm trying, and I really appreciate your guys' support. I think this video is going to be a long one, so you might want to grab a drink or a snack or a cat to snuggle. This has my new foundation routine, my new eyebrow routine, all the products that I've been loving, and this fun look. I'll stop blabbing and here comes the tutorial. I feel like this backdrop color is a little unflattering. I'm going to start with this product by Annabelle. It's a hydrating illuminating veil face skin enhancer I, uh, face skin this is a moisturizer you can use it on its own or for me I like it under makeup it's a moisturizer but it's filled with shimmer not like shimmer shimmer like glowy shimmer so it's hydrating but also stupid glowy like stupid glowy this shirts really loud for primer I have been loving this revolution primer it's really weird, but it works really good. It's the Onyx Primer. It's a blurring and mattifying black gel primer. It's actually black. Pretty weird, right? Ah! That was too much. You don't need that much. It says that it dries clear. Maybe it does eventually. Maybe I just don't give it enough time. It goes like kind of clear. But it pretty much just makes my face look really dirty, like I was cleaning a chimney. And I don't know what it is about this primer, but the way my foundation wears and applies is amazing. It's so soft and silky, makes my pores look decent. It's not like super, super pore filling, but pretty good. But as you can see, it looks not great if you're not going to put on foundation. For foundation, I've been using this LA Girl foundation, the Pro Matte HD Longwear Matte Foundation in the shade Beige. Also LA Girl, I've been mixing it with this Luminous Glow Skin Illuminator in the shade Moonlight. I've got a little stainless steel makeup palette on my desk. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not just putting it on my desk. And then using my Fenty foundation brush, I love so much to put on my little foundation concoction. It's still about a medium coverage. It has such a nice finish and I just cannot get over how this makeup wears. Like I'm talking nine hours later and it still looks good. If you want a little bit more coverage, it's also super buildable. It dries down to a nice matte finish and you can just build on top of it without it getting super cakey. That's really inexpensive. Moving on to concealer, this has been my favorite since I got it. It's so good. This is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Concealer. I'm using the shade 145. First I'm concealing under my eyes. Blending that out with a sponge and then taking any extra across my eyelid. After I blend out my concealer, I really love to take my damp sponge and bounce it all over my face. Kind of picks up any excess product, makes you look nice and airbrushed. I love contouring with cream, but lately I've been about the powder contour life. So I'm going to set my foundation with the Fenty powder love this powder it's so good i'm using the shade butter first make sure not to set my eyelids with a crease and i'm gonna go pretty heavy with the powder and then only for my under eye i'm gonna go in and layer the lavender shade on top 
to really brighten that up. And just kind of pressing it in, mixing it with the butter shade. And then back in with butter. I'm going to go in and add extra powder to the areas that I want to be a little brighter. Like under where I'll add my contour. Center of my forehead. A little on my chin. Definitely going to bake in my smile lines. Because they crease. I'm not sure how. I never smile. And then I'm going to take the Fenty setting brush and I'm just going to dust powder everywhere else. I'm also going to dust off the excess because I do notice if you leave this powder on for too long, it's really hard to dust away. When I dust away powder that's been sitting a long time, I don't sweep it away because I'm always afraid that it's going to move my foundation. Instead, I just use patting motions and kind of pat it away. Also going to set my lids. Moving on to contour. I've been using the NYX Three Steps to Sculpt contour shade for a hot minute now. It's so good. And I'm obsessed with this little brush for contouring. It is not a contour brush. This is the Sigma Concealer Blend Kabuki. I'm sure it's excellent for that as well. But it's like the perfect size and density for going in with powder contour. Contouring the hollow of my cheeks, along my jawline and right under here to create a shadow. Try and make it look like I've got a sharper jawline popping. And then for my forehead, I just kind of tap it in instead of pulling the brush around because my forehead's really dry. And the more pulling around I do, the worse the dryness looks. If I just pat it on, it still looks pretty flawless. And then since I'm a little bit more tanned than usual, thanks to Mexico, this is definitely extra, not a necessary step, but I've been using this BH Cosmetics Bronzer in Golden Gal, which is much lighter, a little bit warmer. And with my big powder brush, I just really lightly kind of go over all of the contoured areas and it just warms up my face so nicely, makes everything look a little bit more blended. And now I will contour my nose. You guys can come a little bit closer for the nose contour. I'm using the Furless Pro 4E, which is an angled eyeshadow brush. And I'm just going to lightly shade down my nose from my brow all the way down. You guys know the drill. Keeping it super blended. And then a little bit across the bottom and a little bit across this area. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of the lavender powder and I'm going to bake and brighten the sides of my nose, which will just accentuate this contour a little bit and brighten down the center. And we'll just let that sit for a moment. Next, we're going to do some brows. I'm excited to show you guys how I've been doing my brows lately because I think they've been looking fire. No change here. Still obsessed with the NYX Precision Brow Pencils. I just think it's the best. This is the shade Ash Brown and I'm just going to go in and underline the bottom. Give it a little bit of a better shape. Fill in some of the holes. A little feathery action in the front. Because this brow doesn't come as far over as this brow. And then I also have to fill in this little area here. Because it's kind of thin on the top here. Just using gentle little strokes. And then I'll soften it by brushing it through a little bit. The next part of my brow routine is kind of disgusting. You guys probably know it's soap, but you haven't seen my soap. This is my brow soap. It is stuck to a plate. Um, I found it in my bathroom. I believe it's a Lush soap. I, I'm not even sure. It smells wonderful, works fantastic. I spray it with my setting spray. 
I take the little spoolie on the back that is absolutely disgustingly caked with soap. I make a little paste. I take the paste and I evenly distribute it in my brow and, and then I brush them up and this glues them in place like you would not believe. I personally believe it's uh, worth being a little gross for. Like they're stuck. That's that. That's my eyebrow for the next eight hours. I'm going to dust this powder off. I have been doing this new thing with my face makeup lately. I don't know if this is actually a thing, but it seems to work really well. When my skin is looking a little bit powdery and like I obviously have makeup on, I take my setting spray. This is the Ofra Makeup Fixer. I really like it. I try to protect my hair as much as possible and I'm gonna go in like I'm gonna go in like until until I can see the setting spray on my face like a layer of setting spray on my face sometimes I get little sort of beaded areas of setting spray if it comes out too thick if that happens I just bounce them out with my sponge that didn't happen this time once it's dry, it just takes away that powderiness and it looks a little bit more skin-like. It does something magical. My makeup also wears really fantastically, probably because I have 10 pounds of setting spray on. It's gonna get expensive. I've been wanting to do a blue mascara look. I'm gonna start with the Bretman ColourPop Wet Palette. And I'm gonna use this really unique blue shade here called I'm Chillin'. I'm gonna go in with a fairly small brush so I can be precise. I'm gonna do kind of a little halo eye. So the outer corner and the inner corner will be the darkest. Got a clean brush on deck to blend out the edges. I'm gonna bring that across just slightly, blend that out. And then go in and darken the inner corner. Leaving all the center part naked. I might actually leave this naked. I saw Nikki Makeup on Instagram do a look like this. Where it was just really blended. It was kind of this shape. And there was no shadow added to the middle. It looked really interesting. I never know what I'm doing when I sit down to do a look. I'm going to darken the inner and outer corner with Dim Out from the Melt Blueprint stack. This is the only one I have from the stack because they're broken. It's a really deep matte blue. I'm just going to carefully pat it in. And blend it out. I have decided that I want this little empty area to come up a little bit higher. I don't want it to be like really crisp like a cut crease. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer. This is soft beige. And I'm going to take this angled brush. It's kind of flexy. And I'm going to take a tiny bit of concealer. Not a lot. And I'm just going to go in to the middle. Taking all the rest of the concealer off the brush and blending it out into the eyeshadow so it looks like I didn't do it at all then I'll just softly blend that with my clean eyeshadow brush now I'm gonna go in with the same colors and darken the inner and outer corner of my lower lash line As you guys probably know, I recently launched a makeup line starting with lashes and I have yet to destroy any of them. So let's paint some blissful baby lashes blue.
I'm going to use the ColourPop Colored Mascara in Blue Your Mind. I'm going to put some of this mascara on the lashes before I glue them on. This is a little bit painful, I'm not going to lie. I think this is going to need a few coats anyway, because it's not really going on very bright. I'm really going to cake it on there. We're getting a little messy. It probably would have worked really well to coat these in some kind of white makeup first. Then we could have got a really bright blue. I think this will still look cool. I'll let these dry and then I'll do another coat when they're on. Hopefully we can get them looking real blue. Got me looking real blue. While I'm waiting for that mascara to dry down a little bit, I'm going to put on my freckles. For my freckles, I've been using the Annabelle Bouncy Bouncy Eyebrow Palette. There's this light shade here. This is like a kind of like a pomade, a little bit thicker than a pomade. And then using any little liner brush, just go in and put on little freckles. I like this because one dip in the product goes a long way. It's a good color, easy to use. You still wanna tap them out so they don't look too dark. It also stays on really well throughout the day, probably because it's meant to be an eyebrow product. You definitely want your eyebrows to stay on all day. This brush in particular is from Furless. I like it because it's got a little bend in it. I'm putting my freckles on before blush and before highlighter just to make them look a little bit more natural and a little bit more like they're under my makeup instead of on top. All right, I've got some glue on my blue lash. Hopefully we can get it to be a little bit more blue because right now it's just kind of looking black blue and I want them to be like blue blue. They look like a completely different lash. They got all spiky. Let's see if we can make these a little bit more blue. They're becoming a little bit more blue, but more so I think it's just destroying the lashes. All right. Coat number three, now we are getting somewhere. These are going to be the chunkiest, crunchiest lashes of all time. But they'll be blue. I bet they'll be really, really blue with a flash photography. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see on the video how blue they are becoming. It's working. I'm just dipping it and taking like the chunky stuff at the end and painting it on. Chunky lashes never hurt anybody. I got a little chunk of blue mascara on my eyelid. I don't know if you guys know this trick, but if you just wait for any mascara to dry, usually if you just take a spoolie, it just flakes off because it's not really meant to stick on skin. To my bottom lashes. I think I'll do a few coats on the bottom as well. Get the bottom ones nice and chunky too. I love it. I love pairing a blue eye with an orange or blush since they're complementary colors. So I'm gonna use the Makeup Obsession Isn't It Peachy blush palette. And I'm gonna use the shade Hint. Putting it right on the apples of my cheeks. If you're new here, you might not know that I am obsessed with blush. I think there's never too much. Always put a little bit on my nose. How pretty is this blush? These Obsession blush palettes are amazing, all of them. Next, I'm gonna highlight with the Annabelle Perfect Glow in the shade Topaz, which is very pretty. It's like a light golden shade. Highlight my upper cheekbone, Cupid's bow, a little bit on the chin, and a little bit on my forehead, mostly above my brow. And then I'll highlight the tip of my nose and the upper bridge. I'm not going to highlight under my brow bone or the inner corner. I'm going to keep the eye completely matte. I was just thinking to myself that I'm going to use a peachy nude. And then I grabbed this one from Flower Beauty and it's literally called Peachy Nude. Just going in with my finger to blot it out and soften the lip line. And then on top, I'm going to put my Furless Collab Gloss Imposter to give it some shine. 
make it a little bit more peachy and make it smell good I'm just gonna do up my cute blouse because it has the cutest neckline if I can I was so nervous to film this I'm so glad that it turned out to be a look that I like or I probably would have been really sad Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. It was really fun to film again. And again, thank you to everyone who has been so kind and so patient with me while I'm healing. I hope you're off to have a wonderful day or a wonderful sleep. No matter what you're doing, I hope it is wonderful. <laughs>